I hold the position of Associate Professor of Science and Technology and Innovative Futures at the Joint Special Operations University for the United States Special Operations Command here at MacDill Air Force Base in beautiful Tampa, Florida. In this role, I lead the Department of Strategic Intelligence and Emerging Technologies for the College of Special Operations and Low Intensity Conflict. My duties involve conducting teaching and learning, research and analysis, and service and outreach focused on disruptive and emerging technologies. Specifically, I concentrate on technologies relevant to the Special Operations Intelligence Enterprise, such as soft education, readiness, resiliency, the neurobiology behind elite tactical performance, and the role of AI, nanotech, and other cutting edge advancements. While our special operations in game is to maintain a strategic and technical dominance over all adversaries, our work here in this department is centered around the SOCOM truth that the most valuable technology will forever be the bodies, minds, and souls of our special forces. My educational and work history includes a diverse range of training and experiences in the civilian medical and military fields. I hold a professional degree, an MD degree, from the University of Kansas School of Medicine in Wichita, Kansas. Following my medical degree, I took a general surgery internship at Huntington Memorial Hospital in Pasadena, California, followed later by a preventive medicine residency from the Palm Beach Public Health Unit in West Palm Beach, Florida. During residency, I earned a master's degree in public health from the Florida International University in Miami. In summary, I started my career in the breadbasket of the nation in Kansas, procedurally trained out on the West Coast in both Beverly Hills and Pasadena, California, and finished on the East Coast alongside the palm trees and beautiful sands of Palm Beach, Florida. This almost three decade medical career spanned general surgery, emergency medicine, occupational, cosmetic, complementary, and preventive medicine. A lifelong entrepreneur and inventor, I developed many startups and hold a U.S. patent for the Fry Needle Driver, the first laparoscopic surgical tool in the country that showed it was possible to place a suture and tie a knot inside the body while remaining outside of it. My work background includes serving as a military physician and civil affairs specialist in the United States Army Reserves for over a decade. I supported several combat divisions mobilized during Operations Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom as a 60 Charlie, Preventive Medicine and Civil Affairs Officer. In 2007 and 2010, in Baghdad and areas around Fallujah, my responsibilities were to educate, treat, and prevent battle and non-battle injuries while assisting civil affairs to working to restore a viable health system. More recently at home, I left private clinical practice and began serving as a health science administrator for the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command. That's at Fort Detrick, Maryland. In this role, I coordinated and programmed activities related to medical simulation and combat casualty care, contributing to the enhancement and learning and training effectiveness for military medical professionals, which led me to my current role here at JSAL. I am driven by a passion for innovation, plus a desire to make a positive impact on this earth, and now maybe other planets. I have a simple love of discovery, and I can stop right there. But there are a couple of additional things I'd like to mention that have motivated me in what I call this neuro pioneer pioneer field that I am in. Now this field requires using pieces of knowledge from across the vast spectrum of human, natural, artificial, and physical sciences to create learning experiences, inform doctrine, and track technology, and aim research more accurately into the future. My work in combat casualty care and medical simulation exposed me to several transformative technologies which ignited a passion for exploring and harnessing these advancements. Seeing virtual and augmented reality, holograms, and how our eyes and our brain experience the world and the neuroscience behind that really sparked my interests. Those experiences continue to push me forward today as I develop my expertise further in the cognitive and the visual neurosciences. 
Emerging technologies have the power to personalize learning and revolutionize living. How we educate, are entertained by, and experience the future will be quite different in the next decade. I think more focused on the individual. Also, for the first time, we can now begin to venture deep into the factories of our lives, targeting and perhaps mending individual cells and signals, saving broken and sick bodies, and unlocking human potential in a wondrous fashion. That potential is crazy motivational to me. I've experienced the realities of war firsthand and felt then, and I feel now, the urgency to protect our war fighters in every way I can, with the hope of preventing our brave men and women from ever dealing with the devastation and brutality of being wounded or worse. While there will always be conflict in the world, I am motivated by contributing in a small way to the greater sciences that provide our side with the best tools, technologies, education, and training, deterring anyone from ever thinking of ever challenging our fighting forces and resolve. Finally, I am motivated as a professor and am constantly discovering and disseminating as much knowledge as possible to our military professionals. Being a futurist, I provide a distant learning vision of the state of the possible with the goal to provide planning and operational advantage to our teams. As a promoter of health, science, and technology, I am motivated by engaging those outside the military as well. Whether it is on or off the battlefield, educating, inspiring, and mentoring others is how I plan to make a difference. In a world filled with endless possibilities and boundless knowledge, I find myself drawn to the fascinating four pound gelatinous mass of connected cells centered between our ears. Focused on emerging science and technology, I explore the neurobiology of learning, the brain as a battlefield, conscious and subconscious memories, visual neurosciences, and the concept of cognitive liberty. I enjoy this intellectual adventure, navigating through the intricate pathways of the human brain, seeking to unravel the mysteries that lie within to unleash human potential. The neurobiology of learning especially interests me as I delve into the mechanisms that govern how our brains adapt and absorb information. It's like exploring the very essence of human evolution, uncovering the hidden potential within each of us to grow and expand our minds. In the battle for the brain, please read the book uh, by the same title by Nita Farahaney, I find myself intrigued by the struggle for control over our thoughts and beliefs. It is challenging to comprehend both conscious and subconscious learning and memory. Spoiler alert, the battlefield of the brain is very, very small, and the front line is right at the demilitarized zone, but instead of that, it's called the DNA replication zone. As I immerse myself in the emerging world of visual neurosciences, I'm astonished by the intricate web of neural connections that bring color, form, and meaning to the world around us. From the intricacies of perception and visual processing, visual neuroscience reveals how our brain interprets the visual stimuli that shapes our reality, that allows us to learn, remember, and recall. Cognitive liberty the concept that grants us the freedom to explore our thoughts and ideas without restraint or tracking is an emerging topic. Embracing cognitive liberty empowers us to break free from the mental confines and explore the uncharted territories of innovation and creativity. Importantly, we must create protection from those who want to take our personal data and exploit it for nefarious purposes. And so, my fascination with the neurobiology of learning the battle for the brain, conscious and subconscious learning, the visual neurosciences, and cognitive liberty continues. In this ever-evolving exploration of the mind, I am driven by the belief that our understanding of our cognitive abilities is the key to unlocking the full potential of humanity. I look forward to continuing to bring energy and enthusiasm to work each day, providing educational content and teaching in an entertaining manner that conveys my sense of wonder, joy, and love of science. I plan to continue engaging students of all ages, 
academics, industry leaders, and the full professional military enterprise through my professorship and partnerships with others here at JSAL. I have a strong passion for the natural world, bugs and butterflies and birds, botany, and even beasts. And last year I obtained my master naturalist certificate in Maryland. You can see an example of some of my thoughts by viewing my presentation for the love of science I did for the Washington Academy of Sciences last year, which is on YouTube. It features biomimetics, how we use nature's design to make our technology do things better, which is one of the areas I continue to work in. In fact, this fall, I plan to hold a one-day event featuring nature-inspired technology, bringing in shark, falcon, whale, and octopus specialists to demonstrate their unique capabilities we can incorporate into our tools to help us win future missions. The battlefields of tomorrow are becoming more and more treacherous, especially since many of the most dangerous enemies are becoming invisible, or nearly so. Certainly, cyber wars and psychological campaigns are fought with invisible electromagnetic waves, and we have entire commands focused on that. I, however, am looking at another invisible topic, and that is the nanophysical world, a one billionth of a meter-sized world, where targets are proportionally small, and weaponry at this scale pose a serious threat to humanity. DNA strands, which is our genetic code, and protein factories, called ribosomes, have replaced our traditional cement and steel targets. We look to the future possibility of nanorobotic intrusion detectors and gene repair agents, and these are a couple areas I'm very interested in. Education is of utmost importance for everyone, but it holds particular significance for practitioners who face multifaceted challenges. In their roles, practitioners must possess extensive knowledge because they are expected to handle diverse tasks and missions. A robust education is as valuable as other essential gear, like a protective helmet or an M4 rifle. For soft practitioners, education becomes even more crucial. With decisions being made in rapidly evolving situations where there is no time to pause or seek additional information, critical thinking skills and quick decision-making abilities are vital. The outcome of engagements, and ultimately the safety of individuals, often depend on experience, environmental awareness, situational imperatives, and instinctual responses. Basically, whoever can make the best decision based on limited information and executes their plan swiftly with total commitment wins. By honing their problem-solving abilities, practitioners can effectively prevent injuries, avoid trouble, and ensure their well-being. Education equips them with the capacity to recognize patterns, tackle challenges, and devise successful solutions. Ensuring practitioners reach their full potential necessitates providing them with the most effective educational resources available. As professional educators, we must first do our mission so they then can do theirs. <music>